Yes! Yes! Get out of here, ball! I'm doing a thing! Here it is! In all its glory, the brand new Blue Room! I had like a weird, you know, I was dropping into the butterfly. Exact same, no it's not. There are subtle differences. A lot of things are in the same place. James is new. That's a new addition. He's one of several times that uh, James appears on this wall. Hello, $60 James Reimer figure. How are you feeling? Oh, not in Florida because Adam stole him. We got the play button so I can, so I can, that's just, that's, that's for me. Are you in artwork? And these photos of me with leaves, it's in the shape of a T. If you didn't pick up on that, I need you to pick up on it because it's clever. Look at this, Curtis Joseph, Felix Potvin drawing from Livia, who who did my, my tattoo. Livia did that, and also that. Pox, I got pox. And you know what, if you still don't believe me that this is a different room, there, there. That, that wasn't all there before. I couldn't do this sort of thing. Look at all this space. All this blank space that I could just fill with things. Now is it done? No. It's like a lot of new things. It's not going to be done right away. You see the, that, that spot right there? There's no photo in that frame because I haven't got it printed yet and it's going to bug you for the rest of the video. You didn't notice it before I told you and now you can't notice anything but it! But I just wanted to welcome you to the blue- Stop staring at the photo. I just wanted to welcome you to the blue room and, and the, the, my new Scream Factory. Just in time, by the way, for a brand new season of the Toronto Maple Leafs going for the Stanley Cup! Don't stop it! Don't you laugh! Don't you groan! Don't you roll your eyes! I don't even want to hear the <laughs> I don't want to hear the nervous laugh either. They're going for it! That's the only reason they're playing, don't you know? That and the money. But they also really want to win the Stanley Cup. Before we go any further, want to bet? You can do it at Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. The baseball playoffs are, uh... Still going, depending on who you cheer for. Too soon? I mean, there's also football and hockey starts this week. That's that's fun distraction. Bet pregame, live in play, or one of our many prop bets. Doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Speaking of the Leafs, uh, who are they? That's a very good question. I told you, stop staring at the picture! Or the frame, the lack of picture. Yesterday, the Toronto Maple Leafs played the Detroit Red Wings in their final game of the preseason, the only game in which a Toronto sports team was playing yesterday. At least I think so. I haven't checked my phone in about 24 hours. And the Leafs did pretty well. They won. It's good when they win. It was very visibly one where all the Leafs who are definitely gonna be Leafs were trying and they did extremely well. A lot of people were focusing on the Dennis Malgan goal and while it was incredible and while he cannot stop scoring, the Martyr to Matthews power play goal. They look ready. They look good. Matt Murray looked good. Ilya Samsonov has looked good when he stayed in the crease, Ilya! Don't make me get you a shirt! Now, when trying to figure out who's gonna be a Leaf this season, who's gonna be a Leaf on Wednesday, when they play a game on Wednesday, you need to know a few things that are important. Number one, you're gonna see a ton of projections from people on Twitter and on other websites, and they're gonna use Cap Friendly and they're gonna use Puckpedia, and I'm here to tell you that almost all of their projections are gonna be wrong. And the reason for that isn't because Cap Friendly has bad information. It's it's for a few things, actually. One, the Toronto Maple Leafs and basically every other team in the NHL haven't given Cap Friendly all the information that they need yet. NHL teams do have to submit a roster to the National Hockey League, I believe by sometime Sunday afternoon. Thanksgiving Sunday. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, Canadians. And no one else! You sit and you wait until November! Like, here, let me show you some things. Right now, at the time I'm shooting this, that's 2.04 p.m. on Saturday before the NHL season. Cap Friendly has the Leafs at about 2.15 million dollars over the salary cap. Well, that's not good. You're not allowed to be over the salary cap. Also important to note in there, the Leafs are at 49 out of 50 contract slots used, so they only have one more. They have not signed Zach Aston Reese yet, which would bring them to 50, which is not a great position to be in. And actually, that just reminded me that if it's two o'clock, the waiver wire just came down. The Leafs definitely lost someone, didn't they? They didn't! I'm not gonna lie, I'm very surprised. But there is this I just learned. The Leafs have placed Kyle Clifford, Adam Gaudet, Victor Mete, and Wayne Simmons on waivers. A few thoughts on all of those guys. Number one, Wayne Simmons. I expect to be making a video about him probably sometime in the next 24, 48 hours because 
it doesn't sound like he's going to be a leaf for very long. I'm comfortable saying this now because it, I don't think Sportsnet is going to use this clip. But when I was at Leafs Media Day just a few weeks ago, covering the Leafs and Media Day for Sportsnet, I got to talk to Wayne Simmons. And I asked all the players this goofy little question. If you could get one wish from a genie, and I know that's not how genies work, they have three wishes, but if you could only have one wish from a genie, what would it be? Simmons said, 10 more years in this league. Every other guy had silly, goofy little answers, and then Wayne said that, and I wanted to, like, I, that, I felt really bad. He's got one more year on his deal. It's above league minimum. It, I believe it's 900,000. And this is after that Elliot Friedman tweeted that the Leafs had offered Wayne Simmons to all 31 other NHL teams. So this either means none of them were interested or they were interested, but they wanted the ability to be able to put them on waivers and send them to the minors. Just the ability to, I guess. That's not out of the ordinary. We see that all the time where a player goes on waivers and then the next day after they clear waivers, they're traded for something and you go, well, why didn't they just claim him off waivers? Well, it's because they wanted to make sure he would actually go through. Adam Goddad, I think, is the Leafs' most likely waiver casualty. I, I like his skating. I like his effort. He had a decent little start to Leafs camp and Leafs preseason. He got a shoulder injury, and he hasn't quite looked the same since. He played on the second line yesterday uh, for the Leafs' last preseason game, and a lot of people read way too far into that. I think he was just a placeholder there until Tavares gets back. There's Victor Mete. There's a greater than 0% chance he gets claimed as well. Uh, versatile D-man. Still pretty young. I I'm kind of surprised, to be honest, he's with the Leafs on basically a league minimum deal. And then there's Kyle Clifford, a Leaf who I have had a pet theory on for a while, and I don't know if I've told you, so I'll tell you now. So Kyle Clifford has a cap hit of $762,500 for this season season and next. No big deal, you say to yourself, because any team who claims him can just bury him in the minors if they want, and then his cap hit is gone. To that I say, yes, his cap hit is gone. However, you still got to pay him that money. You got to pay him the money, the full thing, if he plays in the minors for your team. And the Leafs can afford that, and a few teams can afford that, but a lot of teams it's not in their best interest to have too many players making three quarters of a million dollars on your minor league team. So my pet theory, he's going to be sent down to the Toronto Marlies once he clears waivers, because I'm of the opinion he will clear waivers, and that is where he will become the Toronto Marlies captain. I don't have a source on this. I am uh, essentially making it up. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. And if you're wondering what happened to Rich Kloon, he retired. He retired after an amazing career. And the Toronto Marlies have a recent history of very tough captains. Kyle Clifford would definitely fit that mold. But on a team that is there to develop future Leafs, I think it might be better for the captain of the Toronto Marlies to be on an NHL deal. All these guys are fighting for a spot in the NHL. Yeah, they want to win the Calder Cup, but let's be honest, they want to play in the show. I think it's important to have a captain who has aspirations of playing in the show as well. And I'm not saying Rich Clune didn't, he definitely did, but he wasn't on an NHL deal. So Gaudet and Mete, I think there's a chance they get claimed. Kyle Clifford, I'd be shocked if he got claimed. And Wayne Simmons, I don't think is going to be a Leaf uh, by... Monday. And it's a shame, but it's also Kyle Dubas and his long track record of doing right by players. If there isn't a spot for them in the lineup, he will find somewhere else for them. And sometimes that costs them, like with Alexander Barabanov. Is that about to fall off? I think it is. It's new. Yes, I was hanging it with painter's tape. I'm going to hang it properly. It's just... I wanted it up for the video and I couldn't find the glue gun. Leave me alone! Where was I? I'm leaving it there. Where you can fixate on that, just like you can fixate on it's John Tavares! I don't have that, his picture yet. And actually that's a good transition because another thing sort of affecting the Leafs cap situation is John Tavares going on LTIR. He has that oblique injury. I don't think he's going to. He's already resumed skating. Timothy Lilligren, however, is probably going to go on LTIR. So the Leafs will get some relief 
for a while. And don't get me wrong, the Leafs definitely have cap restraints, but I think it's a can they'll end up being able to kick down the road. A lot is going to happen over the next 28 to 48 hours. Nick Robertson, who may make the opening day roster, isn't even listed on the Leafs forward roster on cap friendly right now, so that would bring them even further over the cap. But the Leafs also have an AHL team in their own city, so maybe they'll have a, a, a much smaller roster to start, and then they'll accumulate cap space and they'll be able to call guys up. Also something that wouldn't shock me is if certain players who are going to end up on the opening day roster get sent down in a paper transaction. Another possibility, I don't know how realistic it is, is the Leafs could wait a few days to sign Zach Haston Reese. That would actually, yeah, he would miss some games, but it would free up a little bit of cap space. I was just reminded because remember they had Brandon Prust on a PTO for like a really long time? I don't think they're going to do that. I'm just saying they could. But all that to say, Here's what I think the roster is going to look like on opening day. Bunting, Matthews, Marner will be the top line. Surprise, surprise, I know. On the second line, John Tavares is usually the free space, except he's hurt. Assuming he is still hurt by Wednesday's opener, I'm going to have the second line as... Nylander on the right, Kerfoot in the middle, and Nick Robertson on the left. Yeah, I know what I said on the podcast, shut up. Third line, Pierre Engvall. David Kampf in Cali Yarncroak, and a fourth line of Zach Aston Reese on the left, Nicola Obekubel on the right, centering Dennis Malgin. Malgin Hive, rise up! Dude, he's been sick, and I, and I don't know why we're surprised. He's played almost 200 NHL games. I keep having to say that. Although I didn't, I didn't know he could score goals like the one he did in the last preseason game. That was nasty. The defense, there was a little bit of rocky waters there. Justin Hall was absent from a skate and everyone thought he was traded. Nope, just food poisoning. Sorry, Justin. Timothy Lilligren, probably going to make the team out of camp injured for at very least the first few weeks with a hernia. So what do we got? Probably something along the lines of Riley with Brody, Muzzin with Hall, Mark Giordano, who's a Leaf by the way, with Rasmus Sandin, who is also a Leaf. He, he's, he's back. In net, Matt Murray, probably the starter for the first little bit, and Ilya Samsonov, probably the backup for the first little bit. I think the Leafs are going to platoon them, unless one of them wins a lot of games and the other doesn't. Coaches tend to like the ones who win the games. And you might have noticed that my roster uh, doesn't have any spares. Well, we're kind of waiting for the waiver wire to tell us what's going on there, because Wayne Simmons, Kyle Clifford, Adam Gaudette, there's three forwards, and Victor Mete are on waivers right now. 24 hours from now, less even by the time I'm shooting this, they might not be Leafs. They might not even be in the organization. So I think a lot of you have the same question and I'll do my best to answer it. When Tavares is healthy and back in the lineup, when Lilligren is healthy and back in the lineup, then what do the Leafs look like? Ah, 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 don't you get caught up. Don't you get caught up that any plan is solid. One of my new favorite quotes from Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick, you plan, God laughs. Did you happen to see how many Leafs got hurt this preseason? It was looking like Carl Dahlstrom. Oh my goodness, he could play some games. Hurt. Jordy Ben, he could play some games. Hurt. Victor Mete, guess what? Now he's back. Waivers. The beginning of this Leaf season looks an awful lot like ones to come before it. Who cares what the roster looks like? Like down to the minutia, I mean. Because listen, if this team gets league average, maybe even slightly below league average goaltending, they're gonna make the playoffs. This is a team that on paper, barring any sort of catastrophic injury to the core four, should compete for the President's Trophy as the NHL's best regular season team. And if the Leafs do win the President's Trophy, what, 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 are, you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You, you gonna buy the commemorative We Won the President's Trophy DVD, hmm? You gonna, you gonna hang a big President's Trophy banner in your, in your, in your room, hmm? No, no you're not. You know why? because you would gladly be the, the worst regular season team to make the playoffs and win in the playoffs than have the President's Trophy. I think in recent years, I know I personally at very least have put way too much emphasis on the opening day roster because in the end, it's how you end up. There are dozens of guys on the waiver wire right now. Guys are gonna get put on LTIR. The Oilers and Blues just made a trade. Folks, we are in for a wild 
few days leading up to the start of the NHL season that I know has already begun because the Sharks and Preds are in Europe, I know. And you forgot to set your fantasy team and you're upset about it because the season hasn't begun, it's only begun for them. Yeah, did you just realize? Yeah, I ruined your day. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment box down below. What do you think the Leafs roster is going to look like? And, and what, do you, what, do you, what do you think of the blue room so far? Hmm? Oh, I gotta hang that back up, like, for real, this time. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that Leafs hockey is right around the corner. And baseball doesn't exist. It, do it doesn't. It do okay, fine. Just tell them the first one. It's more believable.